What's happening, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy Muhammad right here, Premier Leather Crafters, down here in the dirty south of Alabama with another video. And this video is basically dealing with knowing your tools and what your tools can do for you. And um, to get right off into this, I saw this pattern um, on another site, um, one of them Akistan's um, places. So it's somewhere across the pond. But uh, I thought it was a real neat, a very neat design and layout of what this gentleman did. Uh, I can't pronounce his name, so I'm sorry if I can't give you a proper shout out for the tool, but or for the pattern. But uh, I just and that's simply again because I can't pronounce his name. So and it's, it's one of those uh, countries to where they they have. Uh, alphabets and numbers and the threes are backwards and uh, the it got apostrophes and all that kind of stuff in there. I I, I don't I can't I'm not even gonna attempt <laughs> with my with my country grammar to pronounce that name. But I, again, I thought that the pattern was real cool. I thought it could, was real simple and real easy to be done. And I thought that it would be cool. Real cool to put this in the video to show you guys exactly how you can put this in your arsenal. Now, again, uh, tooling work, I, I haven't found anywhere yet to where a crafter can patent the tooling work because a lot of crafters have the same tools. Majority of us have the same tools. And if you bought that starter set, then every starter set have has uh, those tools in there. Now, there might be different variations be, be based upon the company that, that you buy the purchase from, whether it's Tandy, Weaver, Springfield, Leather Wrangler, Wranglers, or whoever the case may be. Uh, they might have put different ones in there. But it's just like when you buy those, those kindergarten box of crayons and you got your eight basic colors. It's the same way as I view it in the leather world. You have those eight basic tools that are in that starter set. So, and these three tools, or these, the three tools that we <clears throat> that I'm going to be using today, is in that uh, starter set, with the exception of the cedar. Now, in this cedar, uh, the numbers off of this one is S, as in Sam seven o six, S seven zero six. And that's the cedar stamp that we're going to be using today, uh, as well as the uh, basket weave stamp. Again, this basket weave stamp can be utilized in a lot of crafting work. And this is X as an X-ray 534, X534. And I'm going to be using a small camouflaging tool. And this is the one that can be switched out for various other tools as a filler. <clears throat> and we're going to, I'm going to use this one as a filler, but this camouflage tool is C, as in Charlie 709, C709. So, um, now what I, what I already done is I cut me out a, uh, a belt blank, uh, and I used the, inch and three quarters on this belt blank. So you guys know that uh, if you don't have the, uh, you have to make your, if you're not going to taper your, your buckle and your tip end, ends off, you know, of course you know you have to up your size and your buckles and all of the different things like that. But this is covering just the basic pattern. So let's go ahead and case our leather while our leather is getting cased. I'm going to go ahead and with this, and you guys know that I like to case both sides of the leather, uh, the front and the back. Uh, some crafters might tell you different. That might they might tell you that no, you don't have to do the back and all that kind of stuff. But okay, whatever. You know, it's nothing written in stone that says you're not supposed to. And I haven't met a, 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 a crafter that's been doing it longer. That have said, yeah, no, you don't have to. So, I mean, I don't think it's just, just the way that I was taught. Okay, so while this is casing, um, I'm going to get my swivel knife with my edge guide, with my border guide. Which, if you don't have these, I don't know if any of the other companies carry these. 
but I know Tandy carry these if they ha if they haven't discontinued them already. So um, I think I bought these like woo several several Christmases ago. They had these marked down. This little plastic attachment piece. They had this marked down to like forty nine cent. So I bought like a bag of them, you know, or. You can if you have your wing divider and you can just simply adjust your wing divider and use that just the same as your uh, your edger. But now the reason why I like this is because it attaches to my swivel knife and it'll go ahead and cut that border edge in there. So again, you don't have to. Um, uh, have the edge guide on there. You can use your wing divider uh, and of course you want to set your your points uh, According to whatever border have a big the border that you want So but I'm going to go ahead and use the wing divider. I mean uh, go ahead and use my uh, edge guard and Cut this in now the one thing that I am going to show you tell you guys is we're going to cut two border lines on both sides to give us that appropriate uh, width that we need in order for this pattern to work. Also, I'm going to lightly scribe with my wing divider to make sure that my center line, so everything stays lined up, I'm going to lightly scribe. I don't want to put a bold line in that because it'll take away from the tooling work and then you once we once we start to finish this thing you guys will see that if you scribe too hard with your wing divider is it'll stand out in, into the tooling work and that'll take away from it so let's get cracking let me adjust the camera and the lighting so you guys give me a minute and i'll be right back okay and we're back so now let's go ahead and get this scribed on here and you guys can see how that's why I love this little uh, edge bordering tool. This thing is very neat uh, and it go ahead, it uh, will cut your scribe, your line in there and you can't mess this up and you can't cut too deep because the guide is not going to allow you to cut any deeper than you're supposed to. So, and we're going to Tighten this, as well as we're gonna do some adjusting with the, the guard here. Now, this is probably the most critical point or the critical part into doing this design is making sure that your lines are correctly proportion, uh, correctly spaced because it will throw off your stamping work with your um, basket weight. So I'm just gonna, and so basically you should have four lines cut. Now, it should look like this, pretty much. You guys can see that. I think you guys can see those lines. Maybe the way the light is fixing, but okay. Now, this is where our our uh, wing divider comes in at. And what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure in between, well, we just need a, uh, a halfway point. So out of one and three quarters, uh, our halfway point is 0 0.75, 0.75. I'm gonna make sure I'm doing that right. And you can, correct your math on your measurements accordingly. Oh, let's do it the simple way. Let's just take our tape measure, and this is one and three quarters. I already know that's what my belt blank is. So I'm going to fold that in half, and it's going to tell me it's a little bit more than 75. It is seven eighths of an inch is the center line. Some of you carpenters or crafters out there, y'all know that already. Seven eighths of an inch is the center line for an inch and three quarters. So now I'm going to come back and take my wing divider. <coughs> and you guys, it has gotten cold again down south. And it came in rain last night. 
and it dropped the temp down to 30 degrees this morning so it's about eight o'clock in the morning so let's go ahead and lightly scribe i want to lightly scribe not make a hard one all right we got our center line down now let's get the cracking with this now um what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my basket weave and I'm going to we have to angle this just right and I think I'm going to put this just like that and another one here. Uh oh, camera failed. Let's get this just right. Okay. So we have our, our angles there, and I'm going to come back right on this side. And I'm going to match this angle up here, which that's a little space too far. And you guys can see basically how this is going to turn out. So I have one angle that is, and we're just going to keep going right along following this basic pattern. Going to follow along with this basic pattern. And you want your, all your points and your lines to touch. Now, when it gets to the point that it's not touching and not lining up properly, then that means we've done something wrong and we have to go back and make some adjustments. So, and you can simply check that. And it might start out wrong, so make sure that you line all of this stuff up before you uh, start to moving, rocking and rolling. Before you start to rocking and rolling, make sure everything lines up. And you want to put all your points together and make sure everything hits right. Again, this is not my pattern, but I like this pattern so much, and I think that it is real cool on a belt or a bracelet or a cuff. Um, the pattern is just real, real cool. And you guys can see all that we're doing is just turning and twisting the, the basket when you stamp. Nothing real hard. And this is the thing what I love about stamping work. Stamping work doesn't take or require a lot of um, focus, it, I mean, to me it's not as intricate as, well, not intricate, intricate might not be the word to use. Um, it's not as anal as, as doing your, your drawing or your shared and design, but you can do a lot with a little bit. And, and it doesn't take away from the artistic part of of your tooling work and this is the part that I love about stamping work and you just want to again with anything that you do in leather crafting take your time and make sure that everything lines up right and I'm not going to do the whole entire belt like this because I just want you guys to see now this is our base pattern here our base pattern now I'm going to follow that up with my my small camouflaging tool and here's the the the, the kicker uh i can use any camouflaging tool and that's really what camouflaging is camouflaging is hiding all of the end points that that are left open and raw so i'm going to take this camouflaging tool and i'm just going to fill in right there to where those openings are 
That's all I'm going to do. Just to fill them in. And to give it some type of space and character to where uh, even when people look at it, they can't tell that it's open there. And this is all that we're doing. And you can pretty much use <clears throat> any camouflaging tool that you desire. If you wanted to go bigger, if I wanted to go with a bigger camouflaging tool, which I have uh, a larger camouflaging tool there. This one here is the uh, D4. Oh, man, these numbers. D438. D438. Is a different camouflaging tool there or if I wanted to go with another camouflaging tool uh, I can go with the C453 this one here and again it's just a larger version of this one but with my spacing at the bottom of each one of my basket weave tools it fits very well right in there you guys can see that just to cover it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my cedar and uh, I'll put this in between each one. Just to give it a little bit. Now, for those out there who are watching, you can change this up any kind of way that you desire to, you know? Again, it's just knowing what your tools can do to where you don't have to go out. Now, I, I know there are some crafters, I'm gonna throw this in right quick. I know there are some crafters out there that has every tool that is available to purchase. And that's fine. That only increases your arsenal, increases your, your, your creativity capability to where you can do a lot more stuff. But you can take the same basic eight stamps and come up with different designs, and if you choose to, uh, because you can simply take the camouflaging tool and instead of using the cedar here, you can just use your camouflage tool there to give it a little bit of different a uh, uh, feel or character or shape, you know, you can change it up any kind of way you want. Also, if you want to, you can throw in um, this tool here. Let me find my, uh, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of, I don't know what I done with it. Oh, Lord. this is why you have to keep your tools all in one space, <laughs> you know, or keep them all organized as much as you can. And I just saw that tool and can't find it now. But anywho, um, and I usually try to keep them uh, in the same spot. But anyway, we're at the 18 minute mark here and I'm trying to hunt down a tool that I should already have available. But anyway, you can take, um, here, let's just use this one for instance. You can take the D2197, uh, this one here, which is perfect for that triangle shape. You can put this in there. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and just stamp another line out and we'll we'll just change that up real quick and just to give you guys a different variation uh, of what you can do with the same pattern same pattern same tool so same basic design and uh, what we're going to do with this one is just give you another way to look at this thing since I didn't find my other tool and again you want to make sure you take your time so that your patterns will come out even all the way across the belt that's one thing that you really want to focus on is make sure that your squares or um, I forget the proper name of a square that's on the side a rhombus so you have that rhombus pattern 
or a Romulus pattern. And what I'm going to do now is take the D2197 and I'm going to put this right on my border and stamp that right there. And then we're going to change that up a little bit to give it that Aztec feel. Just to, just to fill it in. And that's all that we're doing is just filling in these spaces. And you can take and do a lot with, with a little. And it's not very hard. And you still can come back with that same camouflaging tool. Let's use a bigger one this time. Uh, a larger camouflaging tool. And uh, fill in this space a little bit. And that will connect the... See, you can make it as, as however you guys choose to. And it doesn't have to be complicated or anything. And there you have it. You have another design. Two of the same basic design as far as the basket weave is concerned. But then the only thing that we implemented was the D2197 and a larger camouflaging tool to connect that, that 2197 tool here to give it that little Aztec feel. Now, what would really set this belt off is if you come back and you if now and this is probably another video that I would do later on to where I will antique the raw leather first no cuts no borders no anything just antique the whole thing the raw leather itself then come back and and this is something you guys can try um, to antique the the raw leather itself three times over a three day period, give it a full 24 hours to antique on each, each coat. Then come back with your stamping and tooling work. And then whatever antique color that you desire to use, put that in uh, antique the impressions of your stamp. That would be a real nice, beautiful color on, on, on this particular pattern. And I really would like that, that particular pattern, uh, if you if you guys can do that. Um, and as always, hey, look, I thank you guys for chilling with me. And this is not going to, like I said, I'm not going to keep you long. Um, but these are just two new patterns that you guys can try with the same basket weave tool. Basket weave and a camouflage and a cedar and come up with a nice pattern on that. A nice pattern. So let's get the camera back adjusted right. Get our lighting set back up. But hey, I thank you guys for rocking and rolling with me these 23 minutes. So hey, again, so hit the, don't forget to hit the subscription button down at the bottom of the video. And every time that I post these videos, it'll send you guys out an email and let you know, hey, the cowboy has did something else. He's come up with something else to help save you guys some money as well as maximize your profits. So you don't have to go out and spend a whole bunch of money on a bunch of tools, not on the, off the offset. You can buy your tools gradually in, in spurts of five. I, I generally do mine in spurts of five. And, and that way I can pick up uh, make sure that I don't duplicate myself. And when I go into Tandy, if you go into Tandy, you know, Tandy have all their tools in the little cubby holes and stuff like that. And I start at the very top and I pull one, two, three, four, five. Then that way, the next time I go back to Tandy, I know exactly where to start with six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I just keep going so forth and so forth and so forth until I build up my arsenal. So, but, and then it also gives you time in between visits to play around with those five tools. And then when you buy the next set of five, how you can tie those 10 in together. You might can take one and nine and then match those up in a pattern or, or two, and, two and, 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 and seven and match that up in a pattern. And however, you, you got 100 different variations out of 10 tools. 10 tools can give you 100 different patterns, literally. And if you just play around with them and play around with them, play, play around and practice and practice and come up with different things. So, hey, 
This is the Leather Cowboy right here from me, Leather Crafters in the Dirty South with another video on knowing your tools and what your tools can do for you. Thank you guys for rocking and rolling with me. Hit the subscription button and don't forget to leave a comment. You know, hey, I don't know everything, but if I don't have an answer, I know somebody that can get it back to you in a short amount of time. So with that, peace. See you guys on the other side.